Hello everyone, we hope you're doing very well. We're in the F-16C today and we're looking at HUD symbology and as well as that, ways that we can control what you see on the HUD. So first, let's look at the base symbology. So starting out the bottom right and going anti-clockwise, here we have the distance, seven miles, to the currently selected steer point and the currently selected steer point is one. And if I just unlock there, you can see in the DED, our steer point selected is indeed one, and that will change if you cycle through the steer points. Next is the predicted time that it'll take us with current flight parameters to get to steer point one. Next is the slant range. This is a really interesting one. This is the calculated distance between our aircraft and an intercept point. We believe it's essentially drawing a vector from our aircraft through our datum across here, otherwise known as the boresight cross. And where that vector intercepts the ground is our slant range. This is used mainly for um, ground attack. But we're currently reading 7.1 miles. So where that intercept point is, is 7.1 miles. And it's currently in B, barometric mode. RC, do you want to quickly go over the different modes of uh, ways that you can calculate the slant range? When it says B, the slant range is computed by barometric altitude and sighting point elevation. When it says F, its range is computed by the fire control radar. There's two other modes which still looking into. D is range computed by DTS and R is range computed by CARA. Roger, so there are different ways that you can calculate that slant range. And we'll look further into that uh, with the air to ground attack. Next is the radar altitude low warning. So we've got it currently set here at 500 feet. And this means we will give a warning, the aircraft will give us a warning when we go below radar altitude 500 feet. Next is the radar altitude here, currently 3,550 feet. Here is the barometric altitude tape. So the barometric altitude is currently just under 3,500 feet. And you can see it doesn't quite match up with the radar altitude because this is a barometric and it's set by pressure setting on our altimeter here. Next we've got some navigation information that we'll go further into in navigation videos. We've got our currently selected steer point here with this triangle. That is literally the steer point. That is literally the steer point from our EGI navigation system. It's in the middle of that runway I set it there. Here is our steering cue. This tells us how to steer to get to our steer point. The idea is we want to maneuver so that our path marker here overlays this steering cue circle here and that will take us directly to our selected steering point. If for instance this steering point was behind us then this tadpole, this line coming off instead of going upwards would go downwards. This is our path marker here commonly referred to as a velocity vector. This shows where the actual aircraft is traveling so my current motion of travel will take us to that point there if it stays static. This is our boresight cross, otherwise known as our datum cross, otherwise known as our longitudinal axis. This is where our aircraft is theoretically pointing. So we're pointing there, we're actually moving to there, and that tells us uh, the angle between that and that is known as our alpha or our angle of attack. And if we go back down to our gauges here, we can see our current angle of attack is about 1.3. So the angle between that and that is approximately 1.3 degrees. Next is the attitude indicator or attitude bars or pitch ladder as I like to call it. So, so this here is a pitch of minus 5 degrees. This here is a pitch of minus 10 degrees. We know they're minus because they're dotted lines rather than solid. If I just unpause quickly, we'll see that if they become solid like that, then it's positive 5 degrees, positive 10 degrees, and so on. This is our horizon line here. Now note that if the horizon line goes outside of the hard, it becomes a dotted line and this will happen when certain symbology goes off the limits of the HUD. It will become dotted and or have a cross through it. Out of interest, the limits of the HUD are 30, 30 degrees lateral, 20, 20 degrees vertical. Next is our G. I think that's saying minus 1.0 degrees. I think I was in uh, uh, dive there. Let me just um, unpause that. Yeah, that is our G there. So you can see that will mount to uh, up to 9G or over 9G. Next is our 
airspeed tape. So this is showing us here in tens of knots our speed. And uh, this is showing here we're at 425 knots. This uh, letter here is showing the type of speed. The F-16 is just a really good aircraft in that it can tell you different types of speed on the HUD. Uh, and we're gonna go through that later, but it's currently on calibrated airspeed. Next is our master arm indicator. This is currently telling us that our master arm is armed. And if I were to turn the master arm off, you can see that we are now do not have our master arm on. Next is our Mac here, and it's currently at 0.68 Mac. Next is the Max Historical G. So you can see the Max Historical G that we pulled in this aircraft is 3.9. I believe that's plus 3.9. I'll skip over NAB for the time being. Next is the bearing and the range to the bullseye in the mission. So it's currently bearing 170 for 62 miles. This here is our operating mode. As default, we have NAV mode. If we click on air to air here, we are in air to air mode. If we click on air to ground here, we're in air to ground mode. If we click on the button again, we cycle back to the default navigation mode. Note that there are some small differences. We're not gonna go over weapon symbology today. That's gonna to be in the weapons videos. But if I just click air to air, you can see it's just a very small change. You can see our navigation information disappears for instance or at least the steer point disappears it also tells us we're in air to air mode there and our slant range is uh, changing again we'll go through that in more detail in the air to air videos next is our air to ground you can see we're in ctip which is our default uh, mode of air to ground aiming at the moment you can also see that our heading tape which sorry i just realized i haven't covered uh, moved from the middle here up here as not to get in the way for ground attack if we go back to nav we can see that, yes, I missed this here. This is our magnetic heading tape. This is showing with this carrot here and this box here that our carrot heading is very close to 250 degrees at the moment. Also got our roll indicator here, which I think I just need to move my track R a little bit. So you can see our roll indicator. So there, if we've zero roll, there, uh, 10, 20, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, all the way up to would be kind of 90 degree roll there. So that's the base symbology of the HUD. And one thing that you'll notice is that it's a very data heavy HUD. There's a lot on there and you may not want to see all of that. So we have control of exactly what's shown on the HUD and how it's shown. So if we zoom out, first thing I'm gonna do is just look here. We've got a basic brightness of symbology on the HUD knob here, first of all. So you can change that manually for different weather conditions. We've also have, this is a great function of the F-16. If we are flying in a heavy crosswind, what tends to happen is vital symbology like your path marker here actually goes off the edge of the screen and it becomes pretty much impossible to fly the aircraft, especially on an approach. We have the idea of a drift cutout here. So if we had a drift cutout, it would cancel that drift of the symbology and recenter it here so it's really important um, that during high weather conditions next we're going to go to our remote control hard panel and i'm just going to position my track ir right so please stand by so here is our hard control panel this gives us great control over what we see on the hud depending what we're doing first this chap here a three-way switch hud scale switch if we set it to the top setting then the vertical velocity scale the velocity scale the altitude scale and the heading tape are displayed. If we set it to the middle, then all the scales are displayed except the vertical velocity scale. If we set it to off, this removes all scales but the digital readouts. Next, we go to the flight path marker switch. When set to the top option, it displays both the flight path marker and the attitude reference bar. So that's what I call the pitch ladder. When set to the middle FPM, it shows just the flight path marker, not the scales. And off removes both. Next is the DED data switch. This switch allows data from these displays, so the DED, to be visible on the HUD, which could be useful if you don't want to use the DED, based on the DED and the PFLD selection. And off means that we'll get none of this data shown on the hard, which is our default position. Next, we're looking at the depressible reticle, which we're gonna use for manual bombing, manual guns, etc. The depressible reticle switch controls selection of the primary and secondary standby reticles. So 
we would have a primary reticle that we can display, a secondary if the primary fails, or we can have neither displayed. Next we have our velocity switch. The velocity on the left of the HUD, do we want it to show calibrated airspeed? These modern jets, none of them show what we call real IAS airspeed. They show calibrated airspeed. Or we can have it to show TAS, true airspeed. Or we can have it to show ground speed. So depending on your tactical situation or lack of, you can choose which speed you display. It's a really good piece of engineering in this aircraft. This one here is a bit of a problem. It does not tally up with the flight manual. The flight manual says that we can change the altitude tape on the hub between radar altitude, barometric altitude, or automatic. Automatic would be where it changes between barometric and uh, radar altitude, depending on your altitude. In the actual cockpit here, you can choose between radar, barometric, and off. So, and it's anyone's guess at this point, what's right and what's wrong it's probably just not been developed yet next is the brightness mode of the hud symbology do we want it in a default day mode where the brightness is calibrated for day night or an auto brightness where it can choose the right brightness for the current amount of light ambient light finally we have a hud test switch where we can test the function of the hud now it's important to say at this point this is obviously very early access this is uh, October 2019 a lot of this stuff doesn't work or doesn't work properly yet obviously it will all be implemented in the future so that's it we've shown the HUD symbology the HUD mode the way to change the brightness and the control methods that we have and we are getting in the next few months I hope that was useful and see you later